I now want to introduce you guys to a few things, uh, mainly flags, some people call them switches, and these are going to be ways that we can further customize the commands that we've been using. Right? Remember, those commands are programs, ls, cd, cp, all those things we've seen are programs. We can further customize them, and this might seem a little bit scary because things start to get crazy, but we're going to work very slow. We're going to start to see some of the popular switches and flags that we will use for the basic commands that we've seen. And then for the new commands that we will be introduced to, we will, I got the hiccups right now, I'm sorry. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, suppress it, but it keeps coming up. And then for the ones that we will see, uh, then I'll start to introduce a few more. Now, one thing, let's, before we start, the manual pages. The manual pages are really useful. A lot of people will always tell you, if you look for help online, people say, read the manual pages. It might be intimidating at first, but... It really helps for the switches and for the flags. The same thing, right? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call them flags because that's what I want to call them. Use the command man and then write the name of the command that you want more information on. We'll start with ls because that's the easiest one. Then you're going to get this nice page over here and it's going to seem a bit crazy, but what really matters is these over here, right? These things over here, these little letters, it's going to be a letter and it's going to have a little dash in front of it. And that's going to be a flag. And if you write that, and I'll show you how to write those when we actually go ahead and actually do it. Actually, I'll show you one right now to make it a little bit easier, right? So I'm on my home um, directory right here. So we only see that there's one directory, right? There's only one thing inside of here, but really there's actually a few other things. There's some hidden files. If you name a file with a period in front of it, it's going to be hidden, which means you will have to specifically request to see those hidden files in order to you know modify them or to, to see what's there now normally hidden files are hidden for a reason right they're hidden because you shouldn't really be messing with them and it's better if you don't accidentally uh you know delete them or something because then you can run into a bit of problems so i'm going to show you guys how we can actually take a look at those with one of those switches so just typing ls will just show you the visible files doesn't not very interesting if you type ls and then we use that first flag that we saw in the manual page which is slash a it's actually going to show us all the files including the hidden ones so now we see we have a lot of things over here and all these ones that just appeared the ones except for my youtube directory those have the period in front of those so you should not be messing around with these uh, they have information that you might want to modify but only if you really know why you want to modify it and you know how to modify it but that's one of the examples of these switches right we are going to take the ls command further to allow us to see all this extra stuff which is pretty cool now let's go back to the manual page right i just wanted to show you this just so you have an idea of how we go about using these things so we type the keyword man and then the key the command that you want to have more information on and you're actually going to see all of the possible ways that you can customize that listed over here that's the reason why i like it so much that's really the main reason you can see all the ways right so here the one we just saw which is uh with the little the dash a is going to be do not ignore entries starting with the period right so that's going to show you everything that is hidden uh, some of the other popular ones that we might uh, want to use when it comes to ls you can read through these if you want you don't need to know them all your teacher if you're doing this for a course will likely tell you the ones that are going to matter they're not going to say memorize all of these because nobody knows all of these you'll use the manual pages when you need to use them uh, so l over here this one with the little dash the l is going to be long listing format i'll show you guys that in a moment that's going to be popular because it's going to allow us to get some more information on all the files that we have it's going to tell us a few more things which is real cool we'll see that in a moment uh with some other ones that we will pop we will use pretty often reverse if you want things to be reverse order you can use the little um little slash and then the r and you can use these together right so if you're using them together you don't need to write them separately you can write them together right they're just one uh character long so essentially if i want to write ls uh, and i want to use l and a i could just write it like this l a and it's going to show me them in long form so this is them all in long form right now as well as the hidden ones are shown. So the L that we see over here, the reason why it's all like this is because that's the long form. It's going to show you the date, show you the time. It'll show you uh, the size of the file or the, uh, the file and the uh, directory show you the group. Uh, it will show you who created it and it'll show you uh, the permissions over here and what they are. So that is the 
you know, how we can use multiple of those flags. We can use a ton of them if we want. We can use all the letters and it'll show you crazy amounts of information that you might not want to know. So you get to choose what specifics you want. So this is LS with the L and the A flag or the L and the A switch, whatever you want to call it. Let's look at a bit. I guess that's it really. Do I want to cover anything more? I guess we can go ahead and do it again with the reverse order. So now we do LAR. So now it's going to include the reverse order. And now we see that everything is the other way uh, than it was before, right? We see that the YouTube is from went from the bottom to the top and everything uh, reversed itself. These guys are now all the way at the bottom. So we have all of these flags for everything, right? So what are some other ones that we've seen so far, right? We saw a CD. So what if we did man CD? Uh, there's no man for a CD. Okay, well, that's, that's just that's pretty stupid. I guess CD is kind of pretty specific, right? So that's probably a stupid thing to do. Uh, what's some other ones that we've seen? Copy, right? So we can go ahead and do CB. So copy all files and directories. Um, we see we have all these options available over here. You can look into the specifics and any information you'd ever want is written inside of here. Why is my computer going crazy? Okay, it's at the bottom. That's why. All right. So that's, um, I can't believe I did man CD, right? Everyone, if someone's watching this video knows what they're talking about. They're going to think I'm an idiot. Uh, so anyway, you, you can get the gist of what, what these things are about. Um, it's pretty simple. It's just a way to further customize your commands. And I'm just introducing this now because we have gotten to learn some of the basic commands. And now I want to show you that they will get even more complicated. So now when I introduce a command, I will likely introduce these extra ways about doing it, uh, some extra ways to do it, the, the important flags, if you will. And your teacher should also introduce them as well. So make sure you learn the ones that you see in class because those will be the ones you'll need for your test. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.